What's going on, everybody? It's David from the 80s, and you are now entering the Cinema Chop Shop, so park your ass right there. And while you're there, don't forget to hit the like, the share, and the subscribe button. Also, if you check the link below, you see a Patreon account. You click it, you become a member. All you got to do is try to recommend movies and music and trailers for me to react to. Now, with that being said, we are here today with a really quick review for the animated series, What If, Marvel Studios, Disney+, Plus, all that good stuff. The first episode was about uh, a what-if scenario if uh, Peggy Carter would have took the serum instead of Captain America and becomes Captain Carter. I honestly thought she was going to call herself Cap Captain Britain, but, you know, whatever. We have Captain Carter. Now, I've already seen lash, back, backlash, all that good stuff for this episode, and to a degree, I, I get it, but I'm going to break down what I don't like, and I'm going to probably point out what other people don't like, right? So, basically, this is a straight-up what-if scenario. Uh, it's theoretical. It's not serious. It's not really going to affect the MCU at all, unless this is going to play some sort of role in the multiverse, and we're going to see these characters pop out in real life, which I don't think it'll happen, but, you know, this is Marvel. We don't know what's going to happen, but I think this is just strictly animated. It's going to stay that way. It's never going to uh, transition to live action, so I think that's one area where people don't have to really worry about, but, you know, people are going to trip out, and people are going to make, make a big deal out of nothing, but this is what I think of the episode. The episode was okay. It literally was just watching Captain America, the first one, animated, but just what it freaking... Instead of Cap is Peggy. That's it. That's what it really felt like. Uh, the A lot of people are upset because there was a lot of, like, gender topics going up, right? You know? Like, they were treating her different because she was a woman. They were kind of, like, giving her jabs at her because of her woman. And although this shit seems a little bit excessive and a little bit, uh, you know, you have to take into account that this was World War II. And I believe that World War II was the first war where they allowed women to actually enter the front lines. Now, did they do this willingly? Did they do this with the most happiest smile on their face? Of course not, because there was still, at the time, there was black soldiers that served in the military, and black soldiers were looked at a certain type of way. Hell, even when they came home after winning the war, you know, they were still spitted on and disrespecting and things like that. So I can understand the kind of the dynamics of this episode. I can understand how her becoming, you know, a super soldier and becoming that, that, that army uh, image or the image of freedom will kind of rub people the wrong way because she's a woman. You get what I'm saying? Because during that time frame, you know, there people were thinking different. There was a different mentality. Now, here's the thing where this gets kind of tricky. You have to ask yourself, is Disney doing this because they're trying to be, you know, uh, inclusive, you know, everybody, you know, inclusive, feminist, you know, are they doing it for that reason? Or are they doing it to stay probably historically accurate? My opinion is Disney, and with Disney's track record, they're probably doing it to pander. They're probably doing it, you know, to pander to the feminist uh, crowd. But truthfully, the story couldn't be told without touching on that topic of, you know, women, uh, a woman's super soldier not being embraced off top. Like, that's really what probably would happen during that time frame. A woman's super soldier probably wouldn't be embraced. You know, that she wouldn't be everybody's first pick. She, everybody wouldn't be so open-armed and welcoming. They would probably be looking at her like, see, we wasted our fucking time, and we wasted the super serum on you, you know? Just like if that was probably an African-American male. Same thing. We wasted our super soldier on, serum on you, you know? And this is, I, and then think about it. Low-key, this is the idea that's touched on in Falcon and the Winter Soldier as well. These, these ideas are realistic, especially because of the time frame, right? So, the one, not, so I don't have a problem with, the, the, the jabs because of her being a female, because I feel like those are historically accurate. Now, like I said, it's questionable because it's Disney, you know, but at the same time, it is historically accurate. Um, now, when we're kind of moving on over, what I didn't like is the fact that Steve Rogers was acting like a bitch. Like, he was acting like a weenie, like straight up. Like, he took like a straight up, uh, like he took kind of like the passenger seat. It seemed like she was the one courting him. And it really felt kind of like literal role reversals. Now, this kind of low-key isn't historically accurate because during that time frame, you know, it was kind of the idea of the man courting the women and things like that. So for him to kind of be like really like, oh, you owe me a dance. Like he really seemed like he was playing like, like the female character in the relationship, if that makes sense to anybody. Like he really took felt like he took a, back, a, a step back. And 
Steve Rogers, even when he was a puny little wimp, he still had heart, you know, like he wasn't no bitch, even when he was like, you know, even when he was a wimp, like when he was skinny and scrawny and had no super serum. So it's kind of weird to see him play downplayed like that. Like they really downplayed him low key just a little bit, just in his relationship with Peggy. As far as the superhero aspect, him getting a low key uh, Iron Man suit or the pre Iron Man suit, uh, freaking powered by the Tesseract. He was a superhero. He was tight, man. But then on top of that, he was all questioning himself. So, oh, you know, well, is it? It's not me. I'm not nothing. You know, I'm nothing without the armor. And it's just like, and then she had to give him the pep talk, like, you're more than that suit, than that suit of armor. You know, and it's kind of, it's just weird. You know, like, I feel like Steve Rogers would have been more embraceable of him being in a freaking role like that. You know, like, I, I at least I, that's what I felt. I felt like he would have embraced it more. He would have been embraced the superhero identity. He really seemed like he was kind of like skeptical or against the against the fence about it, you know. Um, overall, the episode, I mean, there's nothing special. There's nothing that I would say was like a magnificent episode. The animation was fun. The fight scenes were fun. Uh, you know, it was cool. But another thing that got me too is I, I get like Peggy's not used to the whole uh, her powers or whatever, but. It was that I felt like that scene was kind of weird. You've been throwing freaking weights into a wall. You kind of know how strong you are, and like when she goes out and she's battling and she's doing certain things, she seems so surprised by the amount of strength she has. But it's like you already know how strong you are. You punch the freaking puncher back off the chain and into the wall. You threw freaking disc uh, weights into the wall. Like you know probably that pretty well that you're pretty damn strong. So it's kind of weird that she was second guessing herself and she was surprised. And it just came off as kind of, it just was weird, you know? Now, to watch, kind of see her bulk up on some She-Hulk shit was kind of weird, too. You know, because it kind of looked like it didn't fit. Like, her hair was all normal, but her body was stocky as shit. It, lo it looked kind of weird. But, I mean, at the end of the day, it's just animation. It's just a what-if scenario. I think a lot of people need to keep it into consideration that this is a what-if scenario. So, uh, what I, I mean, this episode was pretty mediocre. It wasn't anything special. It wasn't anything great. But, at the same time... Sorry, I got buses next door. At the same time, I wouldn't, I'm not going to put too much into this episode. I know people are upset, ranting and raving about it, pissed off about it, feeling like they um, disrespected Captain America's name. This is a what if scenario. This isn't going to be anything, anything long lasting, you know? So that's my review. Let me know if you agree or disagree, whatever the case may be. Drop it in the comment section down below. And you are now exiting the Cinema Chop Shop. I hope you guys are having a magnificent day. Adios, homies.